Okay, well hello everybody, and unfortunately I wanted to shoot this video a couple days ago because these are all things that I picked up um, on Saturday at this uh, retro gaming sort of a convention, not really a convention, but sort of a retro gaming expo. It's called the SC3 Southern California Collectors uh, something or other convention, whatever. And uh, they have a raffle there with some really cool stuff, and I bought $10 worth of tickets and I ended up winning quite a bit because the raffle there is actually pretty, uh, what's the word, pretty casual. Because near the end, people were just kind of, say, if you have a number close to this, just grab something and go. So I got some pretty neat stuff in there. Um, I kind of wanted to go in, alpha, in a chronological order, but I, I'll just grab whatever is off the stock here. Uh, I got myself a Sheik Amiibo. Um, not quite my favorite Smash Brothers character, not quite one of my favorite characters in general, but hey, it was free. It's about, what, $12, $14 worth of stuff. And it's my fourth Amiibo, so that's pretty cool. I also, this is probably one of my favorite things I picked up last, that night. It's a Moon Patrol uh, marquee. This is the actual marquee that goes on the arcade machine. And look, look at the graphics on this. The graphics on this are spectacular. Look how 80s that is. Williams Electronics, Moon Patrol, 1982. Look at all that. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? I'll just uh, put that in the back right there. Put Sheik on top of it. Um, I also got a couple of things. There's a retro video game magazine, which is considerably differently published than a regular magazine, but it's a good size. It's got about... Uh, about 200 pages in there, 298, exactly 200 pages. So that's really cool. I'm going to go looking through that later, and I will definitely do a review of it. I'll see what uh, I can say about it. But right, just right off the bat, you we got stuff like uh, uh, Battle of Olympus, uh, Donkey Kong Country, Super Metroid, Wonder Boy, Mystery, History of Point and Click, Beers of Competition, you got like uh, Samurai Showdown, all the Neo Geo stuff, stuff about uh, gold box games from Dungeons and Dragons. So yeah, if you're in retro gaming, this thing this looks spectacular. And uh, it was free. They were giving away free. Uh, normal retail price is uh, $12.99. So that's actually really fucking cool. I'm definitely going to look through that later. But I also got, um, a friend of mine is moving to Virginia. So he is giving away a bunch of his things, so I own my first manga. <laughs> um, I'll just go down. I got quite a bit of them. I just grabbed what I thought seemed interesting or what my friend suggested was pretty cool. So I got a Peach Fuzz. I was reading a little bit of that. It's, it's cute. It's about a nine-year-old girl who gets a ferret, and the ferret believes herself to be a princess of the kingdom of, like, the little ferret cage that she lives in in the pet in the pet in the pet store, so the ferret believes herself to be a princess, and she's been taken from her home, which is, I mean, it's kind of a cute idea, but I mean, it, it's nothing too heavy, but, um, uh, we got a reality check, again, cat girls, my friend really likes cat girls, he suggests, so he suggested I like the, I'd like these, I also got, uh, Nehima, or Negima, Nagima, right? It's, it's Nagima, isn't it? I have no idea what it's about, but it's, he suggested it to me, and it seems interesting. That girl looks almost naked. Uh, so I'll definitely look through these. I'll see how they, I see, I'll see how they are. And he also let me borrow this. This isn't a perfectly, uh, this isn't perfectly, uh, this isn't one that I got on that night, so he's letting me borrow this until I finish it. It's, a uh, Owie House. <laughs> so I'm probably going to read that one first, just so I can get through it, and then I can give it back to him. I also got, uh, The End of Evangelion, or Neon Genesis Evangelion the movie. Which I have the, f he also had, like, a big collection of NGE, of uh, VHS, and I only own the first one. But he didn't have all of them. If he had all of them, I would have got, I would have picked it up. But he didn't, so I didn't. Um, this one was unopened, 
uh, Petite Princess you can see. And Wild Arms 1 and 2. I've never played the game. I've The game has an interesting idea to it. It's like this uh, uh, steampunk sort of a JRPG with uh, guns and stuff. So it, I, I remember all the the advertisements for it. It seemed really cool in the advertisements, but it's just one of those PlayStation RPGs that everybody always says like one of the greatest games ever. Every game, every place, every PlayStation RPG is the greatest game ever. Come on, guys, you got it. the hyperbole is too much. Um, one more thing that I did pick up at the SE3. This really nice retro gaming poster. And look at all these characters in there. You got fucking, you got Sinistar, you got Spyro, you got ha you got uh, Lad Spencer, Donkey Kong Jr. Is that Chocobo? Is that a uh, Blaster Master? I could probably go through and name all of these. You got the Pong guys. You got Gordon Freeman. You got Scorpion. You got Tron. You got Terry Bogard. You got Crash Bandicoot. Cubert. Is that Lloyd from uh, Lloyd from uh, Tales of Phonia? Master Chief. You got uh, Mr. Do. Wow, there's some obscure shit in here. <laughs> You got the robots from Berserk. You got the you got the dragon from uh, from Adventure. I believe his name is Yorgel. How do I know that? Uh, yeah, you got Mega Man. You got Blobbert. You got the boy. You got Solid Snake down there. Can't really see too well on the screen. Is that is that John McClane from the Die Hard trilogy games? It's got this really nice shiny effect. It's shining all over the camera. This is definitely going up in my room. I'm probably going to take down my uh, Superman Doomsday and Sarah Connor Chronicles uh, posters down from there. So that's definitely going up on the wall. Because you could just you could just stick it there, that thing, for a long time. Um, also, and of course, by the end, we were they were just kind of giving shit away. So I got a bunch of old magazines and strategy guides. So I got Prima's official strategy guide for Shinobi. I don't actually own Shinobi, but it was free. And my friend, as he was leaving, was like, I may need to borrow that Shinobi guide from you because I actually own it. So like, why don't you just take it? He's like, no, I'll grab it later. So whatever. And this one, since my friend probably doesn't watch my channel, I don't mind showing this off. This is an official uh, TSR land. Uh, it's like a... Um, I don't remember what it's from, but it's a Dungeons and Dragons official TSR map of like the overworld of one of the, I think it's like Lands of Lore or something, one of the TSR games, one of the TSR D&D brands, but this, it's all torn up, um, I really gotta go through, I gotta put some cellophane tape on it, make it look all nice, and so it's not so torn, but I'm probably gonna give that to him for Christmas, cause that's, that's like an official, that's from like 1970s, old fucking thing. I would open it up right now, but it's really fragile. You can see that it's just kind of t being, just kind of like coming apart at the corners right there. Each of those individual things should be its own. It should it should be folded like that, but instead they're like torn up like that. So that's really bad. So I need to go over that later with the tape and make sure that it's not so bad anymore. And I got a PS2 cheat pages book. Like the experts do their thing. Eh. Might be interesting to look at if I ever take a look at some of these games. Use some of the cheats in it. Um, this one I never actually owned, so I'm actually kind of surprised that I got this. Uh, PS2 warranty and instruction manual. I bought my PS2 secondhand, so that's actually going to be pretty useful for me. And a, a bunch of retro magazines. You got the uh, Sega Guide from uh, what year was this? This was November 20. November 1992. I'm so used to saying 20 before things. But yeah, that's uh, from November 1992. The Sega Guide. Game Player Sega Guide. Game Players used to publish, they published one for Sega and one for Nintendo. And then later on they uh, started publishing them together. The Totally Unauthorized Nintendo 64 Games Guide Volume 2. Um, I don't own an N64, but... Hey, it was free. Got Blast Core, Doom 64, Mario Kart 64, Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter, War God 64, Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, Cruising USA, Killer Instinct Gold, and FIFA Soccer 64. Um, I think most of the big games were covered in the first one. It's so like Super Mario 64 and uh, Ocarina of Time and all that, but oh well, it was free. 
Uh, we got Tips and Tricks, I believe it was, yeah, um, from December 1997. That covers GoldenEye, Mega Man X4, Marvel Superheroes. Back in back before it was like Marvel vs. Capcom, it's just Marvel Superheroes. Uh, apologies if I'm not sounding as enthusiastic as I should about these things. Mostly it's because of something else I got on Saturday. Food poisoning. Yeah, um... I have been violently ill these last couple of days, uh, vomiting up pretty much anything I tried to eat, which is never fun. So I'm finally feeling good enough to record this. But we also got some Game Pro magazines. I stopped reading um, probably around issue 100, if not earlier, because this was when they kind of stopped. Uh, and I, I recently picked up a copy not too long ago and it was just it was just packed with ads and all kinds of shit. Uh, yeah, this is February 1998. This covers Resident Evil 2, uh, Ninja, Quake, NBA Fast Break 98, Breath of Fire 3, Final Fantasy Tactics. That's going to be neat. I didn't even read what was in this one. Breath of Fire 3 and Final Fantasy Tactics. That's going to be awesome to read through. Uh, or Game Pro Xbox Games Preview. Think about that. Issue 152, previewing the games on the Xbox. I don't think that was when the Xbox really came out, but um, I believe it was still covering older stuff on here. Oh yeah, you can order your own Game Pro magazine right here. I don't even think they're still in business, are they? But yeah, you can just, I can just sit for hours reading through this stuff. Sports pages. Yeah, back when you actually, when you say, I read the sports pages. Yeah, right there, sports pages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But you also have the Role Players Realm. I always loved reading these. SWAT Pro. Special Weapons and Tactics. Spider-Man for the Game Boy Color. What does that do? Unlock Levels. Wacky Races for the Game Boy Color. Blade. Terminator 2 Judgment Day. You just look up the games and you get all this stuff. I remember they would constantly just publish just page after page of like special moves for various fighting games in here. And it's so, so useful to have all this stuff. Dreamcast Sega Smash Pack Volume 1. That's pretty cool. So you got all this retro stuff that was retro. When this was published, it was still retro. So you got the Sega Smash Pack Volume 1 that has all these games on it. But then they have codes for the games that originally came out. So it's sort of like retroception there. That's really cool. I uh, got more McGame Pro. You got the Duke Nukem Time to Kill. Uh, 60, Diablo, Tactics Ogre, Dead or Alive, Need for Speed 3, X Men vs. Street Fighter, Yoshi's Story. Back right from March 1998. Uh, EGM2, Fighting Frenzy, Diablo, Bloody Roar, Blasto. Rest in peace, Phil Hartman. Uh, another Electronic Gaming Monthly. The Zelda Revolution, the two biggest tickets in video games collide. This is back when uh, Twilight Princess was coming out. Don't trash your old TV. Five reasons current HD TVs aren't good, ready for gaming prime time. Oh, that is rich. That is lovely. <laughs> you want reason five? You want 1080p. Reason four? You'll have you save moolah. Reason five? The HDCP dilemma. Reason two? Copycat killers. Here's the one, Shifting Specs. Yeah, this is actually a fairly recent one. Uh, this is from, uh, what is this, June 2006, so 10 years ago. 10 years and a couple months. We got Game Informer. I only picked this up because it's Beatles. Beatles Rock Band. I thought my brother would get a kick out of it. Otherwise, fuck Game Informer. You fucking non-magazine. Game Fan. Um... Very respected magazine back in its day, but I mean, Sonic 3D Blast. How how ironic is it to put Sonic 3D Blast on your cover? We had Tomb Raider, Suikoden, Konami's Epic hits the PlayStation. This was back from what year was this? Uh, uh, December 1996. Was, I was 11 years old when this came out. Damn. Lomax and Evil Ed take good versus evil to a whole new level. 44 of them, to be precise. Ooh, that was Twisted Metal. 
Oh no, I missed the page. Oh no. Destruction Derby. It's 2096 having a bomb. In 2096, having a bomb strapped to you is a sport. Wanna play? Blast Chamber. I have a demo for that. Man, but just reading through, just looking through all this is all taking me back. This is a, this was my childhood right here. Reading through all this stuff. And this was, this is how I got so into games. This was like the fucking Bible for me, just reading about all this stuff. Hexen, Contra, Jet Moto, Wipeout XL, Blast Core, Virtua Cop 2, Daytona CCE, Pandemonium, Toshinden URA, Perfect Weapon, PlayStation, Saturn, N64, Neo Geo, M2, Super NES, Virtual Boy. <laughs> Virtual Boy. They actually advertise the Virtual Boy on here. That's lovely. And this one, I this is actually the second copy of the same issue. But my old one is all beat up. This one is in excellent condition. The spine's still together. Um, but yeah, this got uh, fucking Resident Evil 2. Uh, I believe there's also Final Fantasy Tactics and Final Fantasy 7 in here. So yeah, uh, Final Fantasy 7... So this is actually really good stuff. These are games that I owned at the time, and they were really useful for the for the PlayStation, yeah, official PlayStation magazine. What year was this? This was probably says it on the spine there, doesn't it? No. Uh, ten dollars. Wow. And back then, July thirtieth, nineteen ninety eight. Another Game Pro magazine, uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai three. Really no interest in this. What year is this? Uh, Keith Yates. That is not me. So don't bother uh, sending an email to that. Don't bother trying to dox that person. Game Pro Magazine. Splinter Cell Double Agent. Issue 215. That was, so that was way past when I stopped reading Stopped reading Game Pro. And uh, Game Pro from Mario to Master Chief. Look back at 16 years of video game history. That's actually pretty cool. Oh, wow. Issue 200. That's a collector's edition. Yeah, collector's edition. But, yeah, that does it for my pickups from Saturday. A lot of really cool stuff here. A lot of stuff that's going to keep me busy for a long time. So, I'm glad I was able to share it with you guys. Um, if there's any you want me to take a closer look at, let me know. And uh, I'll see what I can do. So, uh, thanks everybody, and uh, take care.